So imagine we have a cascade of stages starting from a source and its source resistance and then stage 1 with the voltage gain A1 noise factor F1 and stage 2 voltage gain A2 noise factor F2 and stage 3 A3 F3 okay and so on stage N with voltage gain AN noise factor FN and then we have the final load okay assume that everything is imp impedance matched so we have impedance match between these two guys uh, for perfect power transfer and we have impedance match between these two guys and so so everything is perfectly impedance matched now we know that in order to examine the uh, overall IIP2 um, we know that the second order intermod components uh, IAM2 appears when we apply a two tone test at the input of the first stage. So let's let's say we apply a two tone at frequencies omega 1 with power pn and tone omega 2 with power pn at the input of the first stage. We know that when this um, passes through the first stage because of the nonlinearity of first stage depending on the IIP2 of the first stage it will generate intermodulation product including the second order intermod that second order intermod will generate a couple of components uh, mainly uh, say omega 1 plus omega 2 and say omega 1 minus omega 2 plus some DC and some higher frequency components uh, let's say 2 omega 2 and 2 omega 1 and DC. Um, now, we know the power of these guys, if we refer to as IM2, uh, can be defined as a function of PN and IIP2 of the block, roughly speaking. So, for this scenario, we know in dB scale, IM2 in dB is 2PN in dB minus I. Uh, let's say we are doing everything input referred, so IIP2 in input referred intercept point of second order again in dB. So in linear scale, what we get is IIM2, let's say I show it this way because I just wanted to show, uh, highlight that it's linear scale and it is input referred, is uh, P in squared divided by IIP2. Uh, and this is power again, so we need to be careful. This is in power, not voltage. Uh, all right, so voltage-wise, obviously, is Pn divided by square root of IIP2. Okay, so have that in mind. Now we know when this passes through the first state, it generates these two intermodulation products. When it continues passing through the rest of cascade of the stages then it generate additional IM2 components on top of this guy. So this is the IM2 component generated by the second block, this is the IM2 component generated by the third block and so on. So two scenarios happen here. One co uh, for coherent coherent sort of worst case scenario um, when everything at frequency omega 1 plus omega 2 and omega 1 minus omega 2 they adds up they add up coherently in a sort of worst case scenario for most powerful second order uh, intermod product uh, generated so we have in that scenario the total im2 input referred is equal to sum of all generated intermodulation product of second order from stage 1 to stage n as shown here. Again, show it small to indicate its voltage, its linear, and its input referred. Okay, so like this. Now, from this, we know that if we want to associate a total effective equivalent uh, intercept point of second order for the whole cascade, we can replace this guy with that, right? And then we can replace this with um, P 
Pn for the first stage Pn divided by um, IIP2 of first stage. Again, we are coherently adding everything as a worst case scenario. So plus for the second stage, this Pn that is applied to the very first, it becomes Pn times a, a, a A1 squared, and A1 is voltage gain. So it becomes Pn, these two guys, appeared with power Pn times A1 squared at the input of A2. A1 squared divided by IIP2 of second stage, but this would be input referred into second order intermod product at the input of the second stage. We wanted to, uh, uh, we want to compute it at the input of the first stage, so we need to divide it. Um, and by the way, this is voltage, right? We are adding everything in voltage, so we need to transfer it back to the input of first stage, dividing by the voltage gain of it. So it would be divided by A1 plus Pn. A1 squared, A2 squared, that is the uh, applied omega 1, omega 2 um, tones that would be at the input of the third stage. So they have, they should be multiplied by this scalar, divide by IIP2 of second, third stage. And the whole thing should be divided by, again, A1, A2, because we need to transfer them to the input of the first block, and so on. So we get that of PNs. So we, it becomes IIP2 total is 1 over square root of IIP2 of first stage plus A1, which is the voltage gain of first stage, divided by IIP2 of second stage plus A1, A2 divide by IAP 2 of third stage, and so on. This is the way we compute uh, worst case IAP 2 for the overall cascade um, in case of a coherent assumption about uh, how the generated intermod products are added up. Of course, you can come up with a non-coherent um, scenario in which you're assuming that these generated components from different stages are, uh, they have random phases, so they don't add up coherently, the power adds up. In that scenario, which is not the worst case scenario, what we get is, we need to say, I, 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 M2, uh, total, power, not voltage, this is voltage is equal to um, I, I, M, 2 of all the blocks, again, power. And these are linear, not dB. So if we do that, we can, again, rewrite the whole thing, and we can come up with an equivalent um, value for the IIP2 of cascade um, for the non-coherent case.